morning everyone so what do we have going on today in my crazy creative corner well i'm going to try to clean the kitchen up or and get ready then a little later i'm going to go pick up my niece and pick up my brand new baby great niece and great nephew twins and we are headed to the doctor and just doing a regular routine uh, doctor visit today so if you're interested in watching this crazy day keep watching Okay, not too bad for this little guy. Okay, I'm back. I was thinking on supper and I found a recipe and I fixed it a couple weeks ago and it was really good. It surprised me. I didn't think I'd like it. I knew my husband would, but I didn't think I'd like it. It's called Texas, let me see, called Texas Cowboy Stew. And this, this was on Pinterest and it came from 1,000, I mean 100K recipes on Pinterest and I will try to link that down below. All right, as you see, I've got my hair pulled back and I washed my hands. This recipe, I've actually um, cut it in half because half of this was plenty to feed us for actually probably two days, to be honest. So I just cut it down into half. So um, in the pot, I've got one pound of ground beef and to that we're gonna add a half a toma uh, tomato. <laughs> we're gonna add half of an onion. And I just wanted to show you this little gadget. I ordered this one off of Amazon. So you can put your vegetables in there and then you see the little grid, it cuts it that small. So lay your vegetable on the metal part, the cutter part, and then you just kind of slam it down and it cuts your vegetables. Very, very handy, um, especially for canning. I have used it a couple summers ago whenever I was canning and it, it made beautiful salsa. So I'm cutting my onion just kind of small. This might be a little bit loud. That's it. I mean, so much better. You don't have to cry. You don't get a lot of <laughs> I've got moisture of the onion in your eyes to make you cry. So let's go ahead and get back to the stove. You can see the ground beef. I turn my onion, uh, my oven on. Put the onion inside because you want to cook the onion while your hamburger is browning. Ever seen this little gadget I love it to kind of crush up my hamburger with while it's browning I'll try to if I can link one of these two I'm not even sure what it's called <laughs> but that's kind of all you do you just let it cook let it brown up so instead of making you watch this brown because you all know how to brown meat I will skip past this and then we'll um, continue in a moment when we get ready to put the other ingredients in. I just want to, I don't know if you can see where the steam, I just wanted to show you how good this was instead of just telling you about it. I was going to try to show you, but I think the steam's going <laughs> to burn that for us. Okay, I'm uh, going to drain what little grease is in here. There's not much, but I'm going to drain what little grease is in here and then we'll come back and we'll do our next step. Okay, we're back. And turn this down a little bit. And she calls for the hat. Well, when it's cut in half, it's one garlic clove. But I'm just gonna be a little lazy and use out of the jar. <laughs> and I just put I don't know. That might be a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half in there. You know, you want to cook your garlic a little bit later than when you cook your onion. Also, I'm gonna put the spices in and let them kind of cook just slightly. That brings more of the flavor out. And in our spices, we have, um, it was one teaspoon of cumin, two teaspoons of chili powder, and um, salt and pepper to taste. She also said that if you add just a pinch of cinnamon and a dash of paprika, it gives it a really good flavor. I didn't try that the last time. I'm going to try it this time, see if it makes it better or about the same. And then I am a... I'm a fan of onion and garlic powder. I don't think anything can be cooked without it. So I put a teaspoon of garlic powder and a teaspoon of um, onion powder in the spices as well. 
And then as far as the salt, I use pink Himalayan salt and then I use freshly cracked, uh, the fresh ground pepper. I think it's got such a better flavor, the fresh ground pepper than, than the other kind. All right, this is pretty good. So we're gonna start adding the rest of our ingredients. It, uh, it calls for just a can of diced up tomatoes. A can of the, uh, this is not the brand name, but it's the Rotel. It's the diced tomatoes with the green chilies. And a can of Lux beans, juice and all. Also calls for a can of corn drain. So for this um, half recipe, like I said, I'm doing just a half. It calls for one package of the kielbasa. Of course, if you're doing the whole recipe, it'd be two. So we'll go ahead and add this in here. And ne the next thing that we'll add are potatoes. Uh, she called for, um, the original called for four baking potatoes, so I'm, I'm sure it's the bigger potatoes. So with half, it's two potatoes. But y'all, my husband is a big potato fan, which I love potatoes too. But he he likes a lot of meat and he likes a lot of potatoes in, in our stews or whatever. So I actually cut up six smaller potatoes. <laughs> so it's gonna have quite a few potatoes in it. And then after that, just two cups of water. I'm sure if you wanted to, you could add broth of either beef or chicken, would probably be good with it too. But she just called for water, so that's what we're using. I'm not sure if I recorded this. I thought I hit record, so just in case, I'm gonna <laughs> say this again. <laughs> anyway, if I did not record it, I am now. And we forgot the frozen vegetables. She calls for the actual recipe, which is, you know, the double, this is half. Um, she actually calls for a 10 ounce bag of frozen vegetables. And this is a 32 ounce bag of frozen vegetables. So I roughly, I still wanted about 10, uh, 10 ounces in there because we like vegetables too. So I roughly put about a third of this bag in here and you can see it looks a lot better. And again, we will let this come to a bowl. It's trying its hardest to come to a bowl, but when it comes to a bowl, we will turn it on simmer and put a lid on it and then let it simmer for about an hour. Okay, while we're waiting on the stew to cut, reach that bowl, and then, like I said, I'll cover it, we're gonna make some cornbread. I think cornbread goes really good with this type of meal. And cornbread is a very big debate in my house. I fix it one way, my husband fixes it a totally different way. His is more basic, mine has a little bit more flavor, I guess you could say. But I'm gonna try to fix it his way, and I'll tell you his way, and then while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and tell you my way too. Um, so we're gonna take about a cup of, he loves the Martha White um, cornbread, the buttermilk cornbread mix, or cornmeal, sorry. Um, this is what he loves. I tend, I guess, because this is more bleached, some I like the unbleached cornmeal, but it's not a big deal. So anyway, I'm gonna uh, use about a cup of cornmeal. Let me see if I can. Now, if it was mine, I would still use a cup of cornmeal. That's, that's about the same. Um, he actually likes either, well, he would put maybe a couple of tablespoons <laughs> of flour in the cornmeal, but he also likes this um, Kentucky Colonel seasoned flour. So we're gonna go ahead and use some of that. We'll use just a couple of tablespoons. Oh. But this seasoning, it's really good, like for fried chicken or chicken tenders, um, cornbread. It's really good uh, for a lot of stuff. Uh, it, it's just a seasoned flour. It's okay. So it's kind of a heaping tablespoon. Here is, I about already spilled it. Here's the second tablespoon. All right. Me, I would probably put about a cup of um, cornmeal and about a fourth cup of just regular flour in mine. That's how I like mine. Okay, so next, we will add an egg and that's the same in both of ours. Okay, where it, it um, let me wash my hands, wash that egg off. 
Okay, where we differ, uh, like I said, we both put an egg in it, but I like a tablespoon of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise makes your cornbread just really soft. It's He says it's cakey. It's not cakey, <laughs> but it is soft. It has not as, I know sometimes certain cornbreads are just real, almost grainy-like, and I don't like cornbread like that. Um, I like it just a little bit softer, so I put a tablespoon of mayonnaise in it. And then I also, like I said, I like flavor, and like I've done told you about my uh, onion powder and garlic powder, I will sprinkle in probably roughly about a teaspoon or half a teaspoon garlic powder and the onion powder, and then I'll sprinkle some salt, and actually that cracked black pepper is really good in it as well. Um, I'm the type of cook, I guess you call it cooking with love, I don't know. I don't measure a whole lot, so I'm trying to sort of get a measurement so, you know, so you all can follow along. <laughs> So I'm trying my best. <laughs> okay, so we've got the egg in here. Like I said, I would have had an egg and uh, mayonnaise uh, and the spices. Then we're gonna add buttermilk. Me and him both agree on the buttermilk. He makes it so good. Let me try with a half a cup. That probably will be about right. Like I said, we cook, cook with love, so it's hard to sometimes tell you exactly what the measurements are. So that was a half a cup of buttermilk. That's about right. And then I'm gonna put probably, I'll put a half cup in here, but I'm probably gonna go with about a fourth at first to see. So we're doing half of this half. Um, but water, we put water in it. Honestly, I'm not sure if he does. I kinda don't think he does, I don't know, but I was always raised with that. And I guess it probably goes back to, you know, depression error or, just, you know, having hard times when, like, my uh, grandparents were growing up. My parents, you know, they kind of had a hard time, too, but the grandparents, real, especially, like I said, living in that depression era. So, a lot of times in, in certain recipes, like gravy um, and, and um, cornbread, we might put some milk in it, but then we also add water, so it's kind of saving on milk, if that makes any sense. So, this is... I think it's just a tiny bit. Let me show you. Oh, you can't even see. Um, that's still just a little bit too thick. I'm going to add a little bit more water. So there's another half. Well, okay, that's looking better. Okay, I'm going to, this is my favorite bowl. This is the only bowl I like to make my cornbread in. <laughs> If you all have a certain bowl that you like to make cornbread or something in just in particular in and make it in that particular thing, tell me in the comments below. I'd like to know if I'm not the only one that does this, but this is my cornbread. Oh, okay. Now this looks about right. That's a little bit better consistency if you can see. Okay, another thing that we differ on, um, he loves, he likes bacon with lard. I'm not real crazy about the taste of lard. If it was me, I would just spray my cast iron skillet with, with Pam, something like that. Um, so we do have a happy compromise um, using just vegetable oil. And I'll put a little bit, and I'll show you here in a second. I put a little bit of vegetable oil in um, probably a couple tablespoons. And my, it's a small cast iron skillet and then let that warm up. When you, with cornbread, if you've got your oil in it and you let your oil warm up before you pour the cornbread, it makes that bottom even more crisp. I know some people love a crispy outer edge of the cornbread, and that's one good way of getting the bottom and the edges around just really crispy, um, is heating your oil up. So I've got it in there. I've turned my oven on 400. I only reached a bowl, as you can see, but I've got it on simmer now. All right, we're going to put our lid on it and just let it sit away. All right. And you can hopefully see, and I'll just kind of swirl it around and um, carefully sort, tilt it and swirl it around so that way it gets kind of on the sides too. But here we go. If the oil's hot enough, you'll see it bubble in, or even here, and I'll show you. I don't know, I don't want to try to make you dizzy, but if you're able to see, that's kind of bubbling. And that action is what gives your uh, edge and your bottom that good crispy texture that a lot of people like. So we're gonna put this in the oven. I don't even, 
um, uh, I just watch it and it gets, you know, it rises, it gets a real golden brown on the top. I'm guessing roughly about 30 minutes. I will set my timer for 30 minutes and then we'll kind of go from there. And if it's longer or less than 30 minutes, then I'll let you know. All right, so the timer is set on the cornbread. We've got our stew simmering now on low and hopefully they'll have a good supper later. Okay, the timer just went off with the cornbread. Like I uh, had said, I put it on for 30 minutes. And actually, I think 30 minutes was a good time. So, um, I'm turning off the timer and turn off the oven. And look how pretty and golden brown that is. Now, my husband likes a thinner um, cornbread. Mine usually, cut, you know, raises above this. But since he likes a thinner cornbread, that's what you don't want to leave your cornbread in the pan because it will start sweating and then of course when it sweats then it's going to soften up that crispy edge if you like a crispy edge that is um, so I used to put mine in a plate and then my husband started doing what I'm going to show you and actually I think I like that better um, it's a little messy you just got to clean a little bit more but it's not that bad but he uh, we take one of my I've got a couple of these but we take a cookie cutter a uh, cookie cooler <laughs> and we just put it on that so that way it's cooling all around but it's not sitting really on anything to um, let the moisture make it soft that moisture is kind of evaporating so it should still I don't know if you can hear that let me hey Google pause sorry I was listening to music before I had that on but I don't know you can hear how crispy that is but it's got a nice crisp to it it's hot but it's real pretty cornbread. So that's all I wanted to show you and I will see you probably when we're heading out to go meet my niece. Well, I guess I just won Aunt of the Year award. Uh, I was supposed to meet her at two o'clock and here it is 10 minutes till two and I'm just leaving my house. I uh, cannot believe I looked at the time wrong. I don't know what I done. I apparently seen the time wrong or something. Like I told you, uh, this is my crazy life. <laughs> So we're headed that way. Hopefully I can get there within about 15 minutes, but then again, or these roads, we, we're having spring weather. I mean, this is January the 11th and we've got weather like it's April. I mean, it's just crazy weather. So hopefully I'll get there with them before the doctor comes in. Oh my gosh. I'll talk, to, I'll see you guys again later. <laughs> but my niece is not mad at me but we are here i just gotta find a parking spot and then go in and i will see you again soon well after almost three and a half hours later i'm finally on my way home and uh yeah this has been a crazy day in my crazy life i finally get to the hospital with my niece and my great niece and nephew and we do the doctor's visit and for the most part everything went well um, I was going to kind of show them but today just didn't seem the day, right day it just too much going on and the babies end up having their um, their first immunization backs well the first vaccines and oh it was so beautiful and of course I was halfway the bad guy the nurse had to you know had the legs and I had their little bitty hands and while well, she gave them the shot but then I got to pick them up and love on them and then gave one to their mama and then got the other one so it's just been stressful and after that then I had to go get some groceries in this pouring rain but we're almost home but I did get uh, there's a couple of new items that's come out and it's actually not too bad we've tried or at least they're new to me they might not be new to you um we've got these talkies they're guacamole talkies they're actually not too bad. If you like avocado or guacamole and a little tiny bit of spice, then you would like it. It's good. And then the other thing that's new was this Starry. And I, like I said, I got it at Kroger. But it's Starry. It's like a new lemon lime drink. I honestly don't know how to describe it. It's, it's not like Sprite. And it's not really... It might be closer to Sierra Mist, but it's not really, I don't know. It's not bad. I like it. It's not bad. But anyway, I am almost home and I'm sure my husband and my daughter has already ate. Um, 
I'm going to get home and eat that Texas stew that you watched me make earlier. And I hope if you make it, you like it. And, of course, like every other YouTuber, if you like my channel, um, please hit the subscribe. And if you want to watch more of my crazy life, then subscribe to my channel. If you like this silly video, then go ahead and, and hit the like button. And you can share it, leave me comments, whatever. Uh, this is a brand new channel, so... I'm, I'm obviously rusty, but hopefully with time I'll get better. So thanks for watching my day and spending the day with me. And I will see you in the next one.